So, Shalom. Welcome to the International Alliance of Messianic Congregations and Synagogues. Uh, this is currently the website I'm looking at. My name is Ulf Diebel. And over the next, uh, I actually have no idea how long this video will take. But those people who will know me um, will um, actually, will after this video understand that um, the issue here at stake is not going to stop. Okay, because uh, this good uh, International Alliance of Messianic Congregations and Synagogue released a paper um, just now, uh, I only got hold of it, um, only today, One Law, Two Sticks, a critical look at the Hebrew Roots Movement. And uh, this uh, paper is a position paper of the International Alliance of Messianic Congregations and Synagogues and the Steering Committee. So, um, my purpose of this uh, video is actually to um, not only to, uh, yeah, to argue about this uh, position of the, this, uh, whoever is responsible for this piece of paper, but to ask these brethren to actually bow down their knees and repent for the uh, issues actually they are talking about. So, after that has been said, um, I actually would like to take you on a little journey because um, I will put this stuff on the internet. Uh, this is actually my profession. Um, I just recently uh, put out a, um, a little video about uh, what I do currently for about five years. It was actually qu a bit quiet around me because uh, I moved to Berlin and um, this was not always the case. I uh, would like to give you actually a little introduction and why actually this is important and why this is not going to stop. I mean, I'm an internet marketing expert, but uh, this is what my profession is, and this is more like a tent ministry, because the issue at stake here is um, what is the truth? What is the truth about Yeshua? What is the truth about Israel? And um, I believe that in this question, I really do have a say about this. And um, those people who will uh, listen to this video actually know what I mean. Uh, for those who do not know me, I would like to give you a little introduction. And first of all, I really have to say I'm an, uh, a follower of Yeshua and I really want to put this out now. Uh, 95, this is a picture of 95 actually, and um, which is quite nice because after a long, long, uh, a long, long uh, period of moving and living out of suitcase and whatnot, I found uh, some old pictures and my... A picture of my baptism actually is in there um, at this place you know it was Pastor Riedel from uh, Düsseldorf who actually uh, baptized me and this is the group of people who actually gave their life over to the Lord and I do not say this lightly because I became a believer um, because the Lord uh, appeared to me I mean it's uh, I, I ran away for a long time and this journey, actually, which started in uh, about a uh, long, long time ago, but ended with my conversion in 95, uh, a new life started, you know. And uh, I began actually reading the Bible for the first time of my life and found out, whoops, it's a book about Israel. And um, as grown up in a very uh, Gentile background, yeah, I mean, we are talking about here... Um, uh, talking from Berlin, as I said, you know, I'm talking from a Gentile background, uh, to, to use the American term. But as a, a Gentile background, the first time in my life I actually uh, met the Messiah and started reading the Bible in a complete different way. And uh, I started in the beginning and uh, came to the end, started again, started again, and so on and so on. And I didn't stop that to that day. And the first what hit me was, oh my word, this is a book about Israel. It's not, a bit, uh, it's not about a Messiah only. It's not about a God only, but it's a story about a people. So I actually became so intrigued with this idea. In uh, January 96, I uh, was the first time on a prayer conference in, uh, from the intercessors of Israel. Uh, in, uh, in Israel, took a look at it and um, I was uh, so hit by the spirit of the Ruach HaKodesh that I actually um, went 96 to study at the Israel College of the Bible. 
Um, I uh, back then I was a student. Uh, later on, I actually did their website, um, and I moved really to Israel '96. And uh, when we talk about here this whole idea about the two sticks, um, I became one of the guys who were at the forefront of this whole discussion. Why? Because um, the, one of the first guys I actually met in Israel was one of the uh, Jewish leaders, um, Eliyahu Ben Chaim. For many, many years I've been in the home group. Uh, we see a picture of my, uh, this is my home group gewesen. Uh, <laughs> this was my home group for, for six years. Um, while I was uh, living in Jerusalem, you see here Derek Prince was part of this home group for three years, short before he died. And I grew up under very, very good teachers. And many, uh, many people who are involved in this uh, whole um, issue are absolute personal friends of mine. I consider uh, that my brethren, they're set on my table. And uh, today, this whole issue of uh, Israel is actually turning these brethren apart. And uh, my, uh, my whole game in this is... You see, I don't have an organization. I don't have. Uh, I don't have a title. I'm not. A, I don't. I'm not a rabbi. I'm. Uh, you know. I'm. I'm Ulf. What can I say? I mean, uh, everybody who knows me knows I'm Ulf, and I know what I. Uh, I know what I know. I. I know what I saw, and um, I'm. I'm speaking the truth as soon as I see it. Now these brethren here, they slandered my uh, some of uh, my very very dearest friends and brethren in a in a way. Um, it's not acceptable. I mean, when uh, uh, Scott Diffendorfer is one of my partners here in this uh, in uh, since many many years, I lived in his house for for six months. Uh, many of these people mentioned in the. Um, in the uh, in this uh, whatever this is here this critical look yeah are personal friends of mine and when I see this report and I, uh, I and I know these people said this does not fit and dear brethren here and I'm uh, looking now here this is your little uh, website nicely made here where are we um, yeah so now one of the issues is, I really want to put this uh, um, about us, very important here, one second, what we believe, and this is a very major point. Uh, these uh, brethren here in the United States believe that the Bible, considering of the Tenach, the Holy Scripture, and the later writings, commonly known as the Brit Chadasha, the New Covenant, is the only infallible and authoritative word of God. We recognize its divine inspiration and accept its teaching as our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. And I really, really do love this because when this is the basis we can talk about, uh, dear rabbis, then we have a word to get out, a possibility to get out of this, you know, because then there is a way for repentance also for you. Now, why am I saying this? Because, uh, well, this whole Israel issue. I followed the trail um, about Israel and uh, what can I say, um, I started a magazine later on in 98. I moved to Israel and uh, was very heavily involved in the work of the International Christian Embassy for three and a half years. Um, I uh, start, made uh, the uh, media department and uh, was responsible for bringing the word of from Jerusalem, which is still one the major publication of the ICEJ. Um, I was responsible to bring this baby into life, which I think is still today um, one of the, the nicer things I did. And uh, thank you very much that I was able to do this, that this still uh, is one of the uh, magazines going out about Israel. Well. But it did not stop there. I was very interested in, in, in the history because, what can I say, I came from Germany, I have no idea. Uh, if you know the history of Germany, what can I say? We were not very friendly to the Jews. Um, so my, uh, I had very, uh, very interesting experiences in, in Israel. And um, so I started writing like a little book. And um, I had a, um, already in the year 2000 a homepage called Torah.de. So um, we are talking uh, when we later come on uh, come on to the to the paper of this uh, steering commission. Yeah, 
um, they're talking about the Torah, about the law, about, um, you know, about the two houses. Well, I was the first guy who actually um, just just out of curiosity, out of uh, um, love of wisdom, went out, studied the Bible, learned the language, uh, and so on and so on. Went through the land, talked to people, met a lot of good teachers, and uh, started writing uh, the things uh, I found. Uh, I started writing them uh, down. And uh, it became a very, very acceptable um, uh, view that the word of God is not uh, just, uh, yeah, it's not dead, it's, there is no Old Testament in a way, but no, it's a life, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing which uh, is uh, for today and it's usable for today. So the, the, the whole idea about Torah becoming for me as a believer, and I tell you, when you take a look at this here, going back to this little picture, um, I was deeply involved in a lot of things, you know, I was like down to 58 kilos, I nearly died and Jesus saved my life. So now um, it was totally clear to me that when I came, became a believer, it was totally clear to me that the laws and the regulations of man, they do not apply to me anymore. And so I went and uh, I'm sure that uh, my pastor will still today uh, will confirm this. I went out and said, okay, pastor, what do I do now? I came out of this sin. I, I know that I did all these things, but what do I do now? Where are the rules and regulation when I come now out of the out of the world, out of the sins, out of Egypt? When I uh, uh, what do I do? What do I do to come into the promised land? What do I do? Which uh, uh, which laws do I have to follow? So he looks at me and says, "Oh, you have to read the Bible. You have to pray, and uh, you have to come to church on Sunday." And then the whole uh, balagan started. I said, "Well, this is very interesting because you know it's very nice that we do this and culturally and so on and so on, but." hey, Jesus uh, actually never uh, went to church on Sunday. There is actually no, no, no word for church. There is something, the called out ones. Yes, the ecclesia, which is equivalent to the kehilah, the, uh, uh, the congregation on the Mount Sinai. And this is it's all about. So in the moment I became a believer, I was called out like uh, many of you. Okay, And so currently... Um, this the story is written out. I mean, t uh, Yeshua came 2,000 years ago. We are now uh, 2014. And we see that the world come to a point where there are a lot of questions opened. Okay, And one of the biggest questions of the whole um, Israel idea about what happened is deeply involved with this, the uh, whole idea about one law, two sticks, the house of Israel, the ten loft tribes, and so on. So now even, and I have this discussion, and I hope Yogi, you will, um, I, I told you also um, in our last conversation, please, yeah, and you are now the executive director of the International Christian Embassy, um, you are doing exactly like these brethren here, what are you doing is replacement theology. And I will prove this to you on basis of the Bible, okay? Now, when you are coming out, dear Yogi, I put down this nice video. Also, the ICEJ is in this whole thing about uh, in, involved, um, um, has a word to say. I mean, it's not that they do not accept that the uh, lost tribes or to house of the Torah. No, no, no. I mean, this is their official video. And here my friend David Parsons. Have you ever wondered what happened to the lost ten tribes of Israel? Yup. Have you ever wondered what happened to the land toss, uh, lost ten tribes of Israel? Well, this is uh, really interesting. So let's see what... Uh, so there is a whole story about like this uh, Indian tribe, 10, 000, 10 million people, blah, blah, blah. And here suddenly my friend Yogi comes in. Uh, so let's go back and uh, let's uh, see this here to sponsor more flights in the future. So they want to sponsor more the flights? The return of the Pnei Menashe, the sons of Menashe, to the land of Israel is one of the most exciting developments of our days. This is exactly what the Bible speaks about in Jeremiah. Exactly, Yogi. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, that the returns of the house of Israel is happening. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So now these are your own words. I'm telling you this all the time, dear Yogi, but these guys are not Jewish. They are not Jewish, okay? And this is the whole point um, that uh, these little brethren here, they want to do like a little universe. They, I don't know, like their little own messianic uh, universe. And um, I will prove this to you right now here on the first, 
um, thing because uh, we went before we said okay they believe that the Bible is an infallible word of God and now um, let's go and take a look at the opening here we as messianic Jewish leaders so now this is a very uh, very very broad and uh, very uh, bold statements you know we as messianic jewish leaders i uh, took a look at the, your little organization in germany i never heard about you what can i say you know it's um, i've lived uh, 12 years in israel i've never seen you there so yes in america there might be some messianic jews and there might be some messianic jewish leaders but most messianic jewish leaders um, i know they never heard about you uh, most Messianic Jewish friends I have, I don't think that you are their leader. So um, it's not we, it's you. Okay, so first of all, you as Messianic leaders of the Messianic Jews, you are leading there, whatever you do there, you are concerned. Okay, that there is a growing number of individuals and groups today promoting the idea that all the world's believers in the Messiah, Jewish and Gentiles alike, ought to be keeping Torah and then particularly the fee, the Shabbos and the feast and kosher diets. Well, guys, what can I say? You said this on your own website, okay? You believe that the word of God is infallible, okay? And very easy, there is no, no second law. So either when I become a believer, I leave of my sin, yeah? I leave of my sin and then I do what? I continue in my sin. No, I follow Torah. And you, especially as Jews, should know that sin is transgression of Torah. Okay? So here, um, it is immediately what you are talking about is not that you, I mean, honestly, I mean, what type of authority do you claim actually to say such a thing? I mean, there, there is a little, um, okay, now... Um, as I understand this, because this is going out, there will be legal implications. Because what you later say about certain people, guys, this is not right. Okay. Now, then it continues. The doctrine with this, the subject of this paper has been around since the day of the apostles in different forms. But today it has come to be known as the one law, one people, or just one law for short. Well, what can I say? You should uh, uh, immediately look into the laws of Pesach. Uh, where it comes about circumcision and uh, participating in the Passover lamb, there is one law. I mean, this is bam, it's from the beginning. I mean, it's not that uh, God came down. It's very funny to think that God came down and said, yup, I'll give one law, but you know, the Jews, they're special. I give them a little different law. And then uh, the Gentile believers, I give another law. And then the world, I give another law. No, there is one law. And when you transgress that law, then you, you are a sinner. Okay. Now, when when you spread lies about other people, you are a sinner, and according to that law, actually, you are a sinner. This is why you have to repent. Now, the beauty of all this is that uh, before that law uh, was written in stone, okay, people had a stony heart. So the new covenant had to come, and uh, proclamation of that is in Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-one to thirty-four. That now the same covenant which was written before. Okay, in stone is now written into your heart so that there is no envy, there is no strife, no contention, no this. Everything what you do, all the fruits of the flesh you do says, no, no, when you are really touched by the Spirit, when you have the law of God, the Torah in written in your heart, guys, then you love your neighbor as yourself. This is part of the law. So the doctrine, it's not a doctrine. This is like sound Bible teaching. So me as a new believer, and, I, and I, I have to cry that me as a Gentile has to come back, you know, out of uh, basically, you know, uh, out, of the, uh, out of nowhere to tell you this. It is, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this, okay? Now, um, it, is, uh, it uh, insists upon Gentile Torah observance universally. Uh, of course, what does this mean, Gentile Torahs? I mean, honestly, guys, you know, when you're a believer, so you follow Yeshua, what did Yeshua do? Did he go to church? No. Did he eat pork? No. Why not? Because the Father did this. It says, I am holy, I want you to be holy. I mean, if you don't want to be holy, okay, but then do not teach others. 
Okay, so don't uh, don't come with uh, things, you know. Okay, so most of those who teach it also promotes false theories about Israel identity as well. Recently, some of the more prominent one law teachers have banded together and begun using the label Hebrew roots to describe themselves as a movement. This uh, nomenclature is regrettable from our point of view since it causes confusion. Yo, I totally understand this guy because, well, um, I mean, if you don't get this with the law, right, if you don't get this with the Torah, right, of course, then you are, of course, not able to get a clear view on Israel and that you are confused. Well, yeah, you are confused. I totally understand this. Uh, because there is this confusion, I already read years ago, and this is why I'm going back into this discussion. Um, I wrote a little book. I only have the German website up here. It's about who is Israel, which is a biblical journey on the true answer: who is Israel? Okay, I published this already in 2012 online. It was written actually in 2001, 2002, at the same time where I discussed. A lot of things which are actually here in this uh, report or whatever you know this uh, I don't know it's an, I don't know even who uh, 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 what this is you know I mean it's uh, well Scott will do something about it and um, I will not shut up about this okay I will put this bring this back into this uh, discussion um, I believe that in the uh, in the very near future there will be a lot of people talking about this, okay? Because um, I will make them talk about it, okay? These are there are a lot of people are uh, in front, and I know also this is also now also to Yogi from the ICEJ, um, Yogi. No, I will not talk, uh, stop about this because there are things, okay, which uh, you have to actually come out and say. And uh, the the way how this whole thing is presented, the the whole way this is not Christ-like, this is not Yeshua-like, this is not a great testimony. And when we talk about uh, funny ideas, well, we are the Israel guys are a funny idea. We're in the end times. When you believe in Jesus, you are already crazy. If you think that Israel is good, you know you're already in another corner. So now, with all the few people, a handful who really love the Messiah, who love Israel, now you want to fight. I think is the most futile thing. I mean, why do this? Come together, bow down, accept. That there are people out there who love who love the Messiah, and they have the testimony of Jesus, and uh, they have the law of Moses. Okay, and um, what can I say? I mean, this is how Jesus did it, and this is how I want to do it. Okay, and um, I hope that you um, actually uh, spread this video about this. This will be the first. I will start teaching about this again. I will uh, start using a blog. Um, I will uh, uh, invite you to put down your name on a mailing list and uh, start the discussion. So to make it easier, we will offer later on, I will uh, give you a free blog. I want you to uh, start blogging about this, okay? And uh, to bring people to your senses. And it might be that um, when I take a look back at my life, you know, it might be that, uh, yeah, I was uh, kept <laughs> a bit under, uh, under control for some years for a time like this, okay? For a time like this where there is a catastrophe um, coming out, you know, we're talking about war all the time. You know, America is a permanent war. There is an economic uh, recession, you know, there, uh, there are uh, ideas out there which are absolutely... Um, more threatening, more threatening than the whole Israel issue. So now, I uh, ask you guys, please uh, come down a bit, okay? Uh, I give you the chance to go into the discussion, to repent, to ask for forgiveness, and uh, to sit down and uh, to discuss some of the issues, okay? So if you have any uh, problems, go in touch with me. Uh, I started the discussion, spread the, the news, and... Um, be well. God bless.